Hi everybody, this is Gregor Bayerle, Presonal Software Specialist, and I have the great honor to give you an overview of the workflow improvements that we have in Studio One 5.2. Our popular Arranger track that is now available both on the song page as well as the show page is now capable of live looping. This allows the user to switch freely between Arranger sections during playback, always a perfect sync, great for live performing and to try out different combinations before committing to a playback order. The popular Arranger track in Studio One has just become even more powerful with the addition of live arranging. And I want to demonstrate this with a song from my band Voltmeister called Mechanismo. Voltmeister is a project where we do pretty much everything with modular synthesizers. We record everything that we're gonna use in the song over the course of a couple of hours. And what we really wanted to do is try different arrangement orders on the fly before committing to an actual song playback order. And this is exactly what we're able to do now. So because of our process, you can see that all of the individual sections that constitute the song are there, but there's no order in place. For instance, we recorded the intro way after the theme, because the theme was the actual point where we decided, hey, this is a cool song, let's not discard it. And so even though all the building blocks of our song are there, the structure of our song is completely up in the open. And just being able to try this out with a couple of clicks is just very convenient, creative and inspiring. So here's a quick audio demo of what this would be like. Start with the intro, even though that's the third section. And as soon as we're ready, we can launch the next section by simply double clicking it in the arranger track or clicking here on the left in the arranger track inspector. And it's gonna respect the sync mode that is set here. So two bars would mean that you're triggering the next section in a two bar grid. Four bar would mean in a four bar grid and so forth. Can also be one bar if you want it more spontaneous. Perfect. Or it could also be at the end. So the section would play all the way through and then it would go to the next selected one and you're gonna get a seamless transition from one section to the other without skipping a beat. Yeah, and this way you could just start looking for an entirely new playback order. So what if we start with this? Cool, then just drag that to the beginning of your song. Then think about what could be after that. And if you like that, just drag it over again and then you build from there. You get the idea. Studio One 5.2 also brings one of the most popular feature requests for anybody working with MIDI, which is the Smarter MIDI tool. This enables you to unmute or mute nodes, edit velocities, combine or split, all without ever changing your tool. Very fast and effective, let's take a look. When editing note events inside the piano view, the arrow tool turns into a real MIDI smart tool at higher zoom levels. Click anywhere in the upper area of the node, then drag up or down to change its velocity. Alt and click in the upper area of the node to mute or unmute the node. Click anywhere in the lower area of the node to split the node. If you do the same thing but holding down Alt, you can actually do a deep split, which will split both the node event as well as its part container. Clicking in the lower area between two adjacent nodes with the same pitch will glue them. As always, the best way to learn a new tool in Studio One is to use the info view, which you can open up by clicking on the question mark in the menu bar. This will always look at your current mouse cursor position and inform you about all possible options. The ability to transform instruments and audio tracks is an absolute key feature of Studio One. And in version 5.2, this is now also possible with external MIDI instruments, such as the ones behind me. Let me show you why that's so powerful. The ability to transform external instruments makes it even easier to seamlessly integrate your favorite hardware synths into Studio One. To do this, just right click and transform, just like you would with any virtual instrument. This will record your instrument in real time so that it's freed up to do other stuff. You can even render your software effects in right away. 
Best of all, not only are you still able to access the original MIDI data from the audio file, which was always so mind-blowing to me about Studio One, but also in case you have to go back to the original instrument track, our preset and bank manager for external instruments will make sure that the exact preset that you used is being recalled. You guys, that's pretty much total recall for all of your external synthesizers that have a preset bank. And don't forget that you can now set your hardware patches on a per section basis on the show page. A common source of frustration for many Studio One users are crashing plugins, which can actually cause Studio One to crash as well. We now have an entirely new diagnostics tool for that. This will make it much easier to get in touch with tech support, access your log file directly, or even tell you which plugin crashed exactly so that you can update it and fix the problem at the source. Let's take a look. After the Studio One crashed and you open it up again, you will get this new Studio One safety window. Not only will this provide you with a shortcut to the crash log, which you can then send to our tech support, you can also disable VST2, VST3, Rewire, Audio Unit plugins and so forth for advanced troubleshooting. And in some cases, you might even see the name of the plugin that crashed right away when you're starting up. If you ever try to find the crashing plugin like the needle in the haystack, this is a game changer. Studio One 5.2 also brings a much improved tempo detection, amazing for beatmakers and beginners in particular. In order to be able to time stretch to the highest quality and without any artifacts, it's very important to know the original BPM of a clip, simply because an equation that starts out with the wrong assumption is most likely not going to be correct. Unfortunately, there are still many loop libraries around that don't provide any BPM information, which means that Studio One has to do a bit of guesswork to figure it out. Fortunately for us, Studio One got even better at this in version 5.2. Studio One now applies a number of different methods to determine the original tempo of an audio loop. Whenever you're working with an audio file that doesn't have any tempo information embedded, you're gonna see the BPM that Studio One is guessing in red in the event section of the track inspector. You can approve the tempo, double or half the tempo, or adjust it manually. Once the original BPM has been added, you're good to time stretch. Last but not least, let's talk about some of the improvements that flew a little bit under the radar, but are very exciting nonetheless. These improvements include the awesome new command Unpack Selected Layers to Tracks, to only show tracks with actual events in your song, basically a one-click method to declutter your entire production, compatibility with Apple Silicon Macs, the long-awaited full-screen mode for Windows, which you'll find in the View menu, or you can toggle it with the Shift plus F hotkey, and also an increased buffer for retrospective record to make more space for automation data and MPE. But more on that in my Adam SQ segment later.